Fighting for their tournament life here to qualify, whether or not comes down to this match. Of course, Solar having two shots at this, trying to take out Dark there in the winner's match. And now, in the loser match, he's got himself another shot. I already said his name, but let's introduce him anyway. He's the Blue Zerg, fighting for Kaisi Gaming, Solar. Bottom left side, there's a red Terran player. A fantastic, good old, trusted Terran. That is near and dear to our hearts. It's the towel man himself from Sistorm Gaming. Give it up for Gumiho. Of course, I don't think enough good things about Solar can be said either. But any StarCraft player really in existence, of course. They're all just fantastic people, a, a breed above the rest of humanity, I dare say. <laughs> we all know this. We can we, we can comfortably talk about this amongst ourselves. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let's see what's happening. There's nothing really happening that much yet. Anyway. Gonna, I'm gonna have to be patient. More air filling time for me, my part, my part of the job here, pretty much, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's gonna be fun seeing Gumiho play. I, I really do hope we're gonna have some mech coming out of him, honestly. I wanna see him go back into that mech every single time. Just truly make it his own. Being able to switch back and forth, I suppose, is more of a, like, a, a champion quality. But I wouldn't mind if he just does mech every single time. I would love that, actually. If there's a player that just does that, you know, just add a bit more, uh, bit more variety. Nowadays, all these players, they're, like, championship level, pretty much. <laughs> or, well, they know so many builds, they know so many different variations of things to do. Army compositions they can utilize, you know. It's very difficult to to be a player with only one playstyle nowadays. It is incredibly difficult. You'll get counted very quickly. In a, in a tournament such as the Super Tournament, I guess it might be a little bit easier because, you know, it's, it's quicker, shorter matches. You're not quite sure who you're up against all the time. What is this bunker doing here? He's sending Marines over to a bunker to the third base. Alright, alright, we're having this. We're doing this. We're seeing what happens. The, I love this. The barracks on the low ground here as well. That is so smart if you're doing this. If this is your plan. My god, the Gumiho. A magnificent man. Alright, let's see if this works. Let's see if this does something. <laughs> this hatchery is in a bit of trouble now, right? How are you going to defend this hatchery? Your queens take ages walking over there. You need to have them tank the damage, and then you need a good quantity of Zerglings as well just to bust this bunker down in time. The bunker, it's got a lot of HP, it's got an SCV there as well, perhaps that might return for the repair. And now there's a Hellion here also, this is, this is starting to become dangerous. The Hellion going into the main base, making some of those Zerglings just run around. Look at the amount of damage right now that this hatchery has already taken. And I'm not sure if it's going to live through this. Look at that SCV coming in as well. The Hellion in the main base has been dealt with. Let's see. It managed to get one worker kill in total. The bunker does fall. I think that was... That was a pretty, pretty nifty little strike there. Curious to see to the resources lost stab. Yeah, that, that seems to favor Gumiho to me. I like what just happened. He killed two queens as well. Like, that's... So much trouble for the Zerg right now with his creep spread as well. Like, how are you going to get your creep over here spread out, you know? That's the place Gumio is going to strike next. Hey, that's where he's going to come from. It's a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. And that hatchery is so low as well. I mean, like, if Gumio saves up two Banshees here, I guess he doesn't. He's already sending it across to kill the Zergling or two. Um, but yeah, I feel like you could even try to take that down, right? Just with coming in suddenly with two cloaked benches, bam, it's dead. Unless if you have poor crawlers, right? But it would come down to whether or not he would see the benches fly over and across. If he had a zergling in position. 
Do we still have Hellions? No. Okay. That would have been that would have been so cool if you still had that Hellion, and then you know you you uh, just send that out first to clear out the way for for the Zerkling scouts. And the Benchies come in. Ooh. It's going to be two Benchies now. They get a bit more aggressive. Circling at the front door. Just kind of want to keep an eye out on the, the marine numbers and what is being built over here. Nothing too crazy. Where's the queens? Where are they? There's one, two, three, four over here. Spore crawler as well. Gumiho though, famous for being able to just get drone kills anyway. You know, going up to six right now. Two on this one and six on that one. Ooh. Doesn't want to go for it. Guess the stealth detection from here is still quite close in range. Oh, doesn't quite get that shot off with one of the benches. Animation cancels its own with uh, its own attack with the moving around of the benches. A little bit too quick, but you know what? I don't think that's yeah. It's not an amazing amount of damage he's been doing. Solar's economy doesn't seem to be struggling that much either, right? That is something we have to point out. It's still 68 workers right now. So Gumio is doing a lot of work across the map with, like, forcing out more lings, forcing out more queens, but Solar seems to be in a position where he's quite comfortably carrying that burden. As long as he didn't take many more, um, many more worker losses here from those banshees and such, it seems like he's in a pretty good position. Even the creep spread that I was worried about, he solved that pretty nicely as well. Quite quite early on, remedied that situation. So yeah, Solar playing very well as well. Already here with his units. He's not going to let those Marines do much of anything so far. He'll still be around though, so... Well, let's just make sure we have those meta effects selected in case we do want to jump back to them. So, you know, it looks like there are things happening here once again. Hydralisk will Hydralisk 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 will be accompanying the uh, the circling banglings here. And she's still being a threat as well. Still has both of them. Look at that! This base doesn't have any spore crawlers or queens. Opting to go for the creep tumors instead, though. Probably a pretty good choice uh, as well. I don't mind this at all. Seeing how there is an attack coming in here, having that creep dissipate a little bit quicker on definitely will help him out. A big stim forwards. All the Zerg units still at the front. No surround being set up. Gumio not interested in making that bush go any further there. Doesn't have Metafax with it, so it makes sense that he doesn't quite want to commit here. Every stim is going to be quite a uh, quite an investment at points like that. So only stimming about half his army there as well in, in order to get a couple of queens, get a couple of those creep tumors. Solar may be spreading the creep the wrong way. So this is the area where this attack will be coming from. There's two Metafax as well in the main base. And Solar's going to have to deal with that quite quickly. Only seven workers. Still not that much extra being taken out here. Enough Zerglings to kill an entire village of Marines. Not sure how efficiently they traded, but you know what? They, there's still plenty of them, so who cares? Um, ah, right, here we go. That's the other attack right now. Um, only one extra worker going down from that one. More Metafac attacks here. There's something that blew up there. Probably a Benshee. And Marines being eaten alive here as well. It does feel like Soda has an incredible grasp on all of these locations, though. And... Okay, 12 workers in total now. So that, so that is, like, 6 workers that got killed with, like, a... A four-way attack from Gumiho? I'd be happy with that if I was Solar. I'd be quite happy with that. 
Still some pressure here or there, but Ooh, that's a secured base. Yeah, of course, returns are diminishing as these forces are getting weaker as well. But till the moment, we have the reinforcements of Gumiho coming in. Big counterattack of Zerglings seemingly yeah, might be able to get a good position here. Very interesting wall uh, over there. Helping out reasonably okay. Pulls those circlings backwards. Oh, look at that. Still got marines there. Got widow mines here being a bother. There's more and more reinforcements comes across. Less and less creep is around the base of solar. But we have to say, lurkers coming up. Six of them in production right now. And again. Only 13 workers so far killed off, but with the aggression we're seeing being thrown at him, very impressive. Oh, the Widow Mine's not being set off right there. Meta Vex might get picked off as well by the Hydralisk, just barely stays alive. We hold with a ragtag squadron here and there. Feels like every unit of his is uh, quite valuable right now. Does not want to squander them. Has two parasitic bombs onto those Metaflex. That might be a bit too much. Oh no, it does stay alive. Luckily for Gumiho, there. Big drop into the main base. Man, Gumiho not letting go. One second of the aggression right now. He's gonna get the hive. He is actually gonna be able to take down the hive here. That is a mental takedown at this part in the game. Uh. All right, I'll have to recalibrate my brain into th thinking about what that means for the game right now. No vipers, at least. Is that a problem right now? I don't think it, it is that much. I would prefer Infestus anyway in situations like these, just because Fungal just shuts down this type of aggression so quickly. And then you force your opponent backwards, make him uh, make more ghosts. I guess he is already making ghosts, actually. All right, well, that, that foils that plan a little bit. <laughs> Oh, solid. He has absolutely been squashing these attacks, though, so far, except for, like, on the main base here. Apparently, he's not trading out as efficiently as I thought he was initially. Oh, well, that's efficient. Missing another base, though. Counterattack from Solar comes in. Let's see what is available for Gumiho to try and take this on. It's a fair amount. Base. Once again, a couple of lurkers gonna hold that attack backwards. Give me hope. Probably just wants to focus on the defense right now. Not blindly move that army forwards and run into lurkers, of course, as we saw we're waiting on him. Ooh, this is a very rough army composition to deal with. He doesn't have ghosts, he doesn't have siege tanks, nor liberators. Just marine marauder and a micro of seven Terrans combined, it looks like. My good golly, guys, that is one hell of a hold. He will manage to push this backwards. Lost quite a bit of his economy as well, I guess. 16 workers. He didn't have that many to begin with. I guess he was be a bit busy with other stuff, as we, <laughs> as we were seeing. Mm, let's wonder what is going to be happening here. How army supplies. Army supplies kind of equal solar ahead on the worker supply, but that might be okay because Gumiho has how many orbitals? How many orbitals do you got, buddy? He's got three of them. That's a fair amount. That is a fair amount. That could make up for like about 10 worker difference. A little bit. Somewhere around that mark. Trades there. Stops that base once again. Counterattack from Solar. Finding a planetary fortress. Not what you are hoping to run into. And a great reaction there on the supply depot as well. Stops those Zerglings dead in their tracks. This is this is so brave. This is just so brave. <laughs> okay, he drops them out again. He's like, oh, maybe, maybe that's not the right idea. <laughs> One spore crawler or one queen, and all those units are dead from two shots. <laughs> More lurkers. 
good creep denial though from from Gumiho. Like it is insane how little creep we have had for Solar, considering in like the position that he's in. Right, it's not bad. He still has a good army. He still has an okay economy. And he's training. He's training pretty okay as well. I'd say. Yeah, this is pretty good. Um, it's just well, he keeps losing this base, I suppose. He has no creep spread whatsoever. Nearly none. Lucas setting up shop over here as well. Good way to get some extra damage done on the left or the right side. There's Circling Lurker also marching forwards. We've got a couple of Vipers now as the spellcast is available for, uh, for Solar. Miho, careful with those ghosts, man. There we go. He's getting them. Cleaning it up. Talking about cleaning up, is this going to clean up the Terran from his own base? Let's wait and see. Lurk is coming back around from the other angle. I think Miho has this? Maybe? No? Okay, he doesn't anymore. <laughs> so, as I said, I would like to see Mac out of Gumiho sure if we're gonna get it though wonder what he thinks about it as well wonder if he's tired of people you know hoping that he goes mech does seem to be like a lot of people wanting to go mech or remember him for his mech play you know go more hellions for marines marching across there's no bunker this time that has been built here gotta say it was a it was a fun to see strategy but perhaps it's not as volatile as it seems to be you know maybe there's just a little bit too much time for the zerg to to get their their, uh, their queen in order get enough zerglings out Get all of that stuff lined up, ready to go, and then just slam it all down in one go. Even with that hatchery being so low HP, perhaps he just needed to uh, find a way to get that picked off, right? If, if that does happen, whether it be like two stealthed banshees or something like that, or another follow-up push with marines, with uh, the medifacts, something, anything... You know? Hmm. Guess you could also see it a little bit as an advantage for, like, when that hatchery is low, Solar's gonna keep more queens around it, right? So you... If you even apply a little bit of pressure there, Solar's gonna be more inclined to send or over-defend that position. So if you have Hellions or something like that, right, you might be able to get more openings on other angles of the map because of this. Maybe that's what he was trying to do with the Banshees as well. It's hard to say. I'm, I'm digging deep now, trying to, trying to think about this. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Who knows? And again, I don't think I've ever overthought before in my life when it comes to StarCraft 2. Just why I love this game. <laughs> Lions not gonna be able to come in there. The Marines still trying to find some angles here, but it's uh, it's a hard knock life for them. It's a hard bite life. Uh, a dog eat dog world, kind of in a way. Ooh, did we get on drones? Oh, we did get five drones there. Seems to be the end of the Hellion aggression. And on to Banshee aggression, of course. The Overlord, though, does manage to pick up uh, a good bit of scouting on all of this. So unlikely that that is going to be 
all too successful. Just goes with the one banshee, cancels the cloak. Wait, did he cancel cloak? No, he does have cloak. <laughs> Never mind. Cloak will be there for this banshee. This one singular banshee. This creep is being spread out. Careful. Good. What's the dead bench? Actually, it's two benches. Why did he make a second? I'm just not paying attention, apparently. Once again. It's what I do, baby. It's what I do. That's a good look of with those circlings. Oh, look at the zoning on that. Wonderful stuff there. Oh, you want to escape? No, 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 no. Oh, you want to escape this way? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. I got the bad minimal amount of zerglings, so I need to block you, so you're never getting out of there. Well played that. by Solar. Careful with those queens coming up so close here. Overseer is a little way away, but close enough to make those queens a real threat. Not something you can uh, try to take one down of. There's too many and too much um, transfuse energy as well. An army like this, though, might have better odds at taking down those queens. And again, oh, Baming Speed already finished up here for Solar. He dashed his way to get that. Now, is he going to be absolutely fine against this first Marine push across the map? I, I think he should be. I think he should be. Just don't get hit by 20, uh, well, by two Widow Mines and lose uh, 20 Banelings that way. He should be okay, right? Should be okay. He's going to wait for the Widow Mines. He knows, right? He knows. Might not know, actually. Hmm. And she's stuck in limbo. Tough time deciding where to go. To Metafax set up over here. Ooh, what is this? I think the Widow Mine set off on the Queens, yeah. There's so much stuff here available for Solar. Sees the Metafax moving, and he's there. Sees the Banshees moving, he's there. Uh, the Widow Mine, though, he's not there yet. He, he, <laughs> he has his limits. Guess this does take priority. Right, not letting the Marine Bio just run wild and rampant, or the Banshees. Uh, Widow Mine, it's gonna reset again, but... Let's hope he, uh... Oh my dear lord. I think there was just three Banes there. And one SCV dying to it. Or maybe it was four Banes, who knows. That is a five kill Widow Mine so far. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Oh my! Okay. I got close. That was a bit scary there for a moment. A lot of marines clumped up together with uh, Bane suddenly rushing towards them. So they should still be alright in this situation as well. In come the Zerkins from behind as well. Beautiful wrap around. Slams this down on the top right side. Oh, those Banshees, once again, a continuous problem. Finding that way on another expansion trying to be built there for Solar. And he's gonna have to send his Queens that way or Hydralisk. Couple of extra command sensors coming up as well. Looking juicy for the economy of Gumiho. Solar losing the hatchery right now in the top right side. A bit of a painful loss right there. 
like to have had that still available to him. Gumiho, no mercy. Not a second to waste with this aggression. Is he going to be able to pick up those queens? Not going to try to. Wants to be quite safe, not overextend onto the creep. Makes sense to me. There's a lot of banelings around and a lot of zerglings. One wrong step and they will mangle you. They will tear you apart. As Benji's still alive, by the way. Still kicking. One with uh, six skills and the other with two. And then they got their value in, in structures and denying creep and stuff. Oh. Uh oh. Okay, one of them's dead now. <laughs> I'm really invested in the Benchies. There we go. Okay, he lives. There's no base here just yet for Solar to lose. He's going for a Nidus worm. Ooh, a Nidus. Does that get scanned? It doesn't. It's no envision. He doesn't know. He might know. In a moment. He's looking for it though. He's shooting down that overseer here. He's chasing it down. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so no sneaky Nidus worm in the main base. Shouldn't be occurring this game around. That's a lot of circlings. And that is Adrenal Glance about to be readied up as well. They will be even more devastating. Unfortunately, not helping out with the planetary. But the amount of damage here, that is undeniable. Nineteen workers. <laughs> it's a little worker kills overall in this game. Only twelve and nineteen. Like, uh, considering how aggressive... Gumio is, and then, like, Solar's still trying to do all those uh, run buys and stuff. Really, not as many worker kills as you would expect in a situation like this. Things don't quite get it there. Right side, only Zerklings having trouble going through the supply depots. Zerklings running in the wrong side of the field there. Not really where they wanted to be. There were no widow mines there, but with that amount of marines, it, it feels like it is a widow mine going off continuously on your bane or your circlings. Uh, lurkers in the Nidus Worm trying to make their way somewhere. Can't quite make it work. As Solar, though, is making some extra space available for himself now with these lurkers just on a good position. Oh, that ghost, though, from the left flank, finding at least one of them. For a second, that could have been raking in a couple more kills there, but Solar quick to adjust the rest of his army and finds a better position to protect this. There we go, another Nidus Worm attempt. Siege Tank is coming over, ready to try and deal with it. This Nidus Worm, it seems like it will be completed. Is there anything coming out? Oh, it's close. Nothing. I guess, yeah, that, that makes sense, because you only get one unit out and it, it dies. <laughs> Alright, Gumio. Might be his moment in the sun. Let's see what happens here. A couple of ghosts trying to break the, <laughs> the camel's back, but that is nowhere near what he needed. I think maybe a bit too aggressive trying to push himself all the way in that location. Made it needed a little bit more time to set up, rid himself of some creep. Now he took a lot of damage. Lurkus eventually in the main base as well there. Cleaning house solar. Making it happen as well. 2-0 to zero here. Reigning supreme and finds himself qualified also.